Hello, I'm Dr. Shannon Farrell, and I'm the leader of the project entitled Mental Health Issues for Farmers, Their Families, and Their Communities. And while that may be a long title, our goal is simple. We just want to provide you with the resources that you need to improve your mental well-being. This project wouldn't have been possible without funding provided by USDA NEFA through the Southern Risk Management Education Center, and we're very grateful for their support. Today's presentation by Mr. Jordan Schuler is entitled Managing Stress Through Mindfulness. And before you start getting images in your head of you sitting in the lotus position on your tractor's hood humming, let Mr. Schuler teach you about what mindfulness and meditation actually are and how they're used by groups ranging from farmers to U.S. Navy SEALs to deal with challenges and stress when the moment itself might seem overwhelming. Along with this presentation is a very quick survey to complete after you've watched, and we would greatly appreciate your feedback on that survey. Additionally, you'll find a link to the project website with many more resources that you might find useful. We appreciate your time in watching and joining us today. Hello and welcome. My name is Jordan Schuler. I'm a master's student at Oklahoma State University in the Marriage and Family Therapy Program, and I worked on this presentation with Dr. Brozy, who is a state specialist with the OSU Cooperative Extension Service. I'm grateful to have the chance to talk to you today about mindfulness and managing stress, and hopefully something I say today you'll find useful in your life. To get started, I want to talk about the ways that many of us have learned how to manage stress. Farmers live with stress day in and day out. The pressures of planting and harvest season, equipment failure and repairs, economic threats and weather conditions that we have little control over can add lots of pressure and stress into your life. Uh, the more resources we have available, or the less resources we have available, and the more threatening we see an event, the more stress we tend to experience. And a lot of us have learned both some helpful and less helpful ways to manage the stress we experience. I want to focus mostly today on some positive and useful ways to manage stress. But first, I think it's helpful to understand some of the common things that a lot of us do that are less useful in managing the stress we experience. These include drinking too much alcohol, overeating or undereating, sleeping too much or cutting the amount of sleep you have too short, ignoring or avoiding the things that you feel stressed about, or emotionally exploding onto other people around us. What a lot of these have in common is that in the moment or shortly after using them, we actually may experience a little bit of relief of the stress we experience, and that can make it seem really rewarding and create a cycle of using over and over again. And occasionally, using some of these may not hurt us in the long run. However, high levels and continuous cycles of use of things like alcohol or overeating or ignoring things, instead of helping us in the long run, may actually increase the amount of stress we experience and so become less useful strategies for managing stress. So what I want to focus on today is learning about a new tool that you can use to help lower the or manage the stress you experience. The tool I want to talk about today is called mindfulness. Let me give you just some basic definitions to understand what mindfulness is. Mindfulness is the ability to be aware of your inner experience, your thoughts and feelings, beliefs, without being overwhelmed or controlled by them. I think a lot of us can recognize times when we're thinking about something difficult that's coming up or something we don't have a control over. Maybe you've heard about possibilities of drought or you know that there's going to be a difficult time coming ahead for you financially. And as you think about those things, you may have distressing thoughts, you may feel extra, you may feel extra anxiety in your life. And many of us have experienced having these thoughts become kind of hooked in our mind. And we have a hard time getting rid of the thoughts and feelings that create stress for us. They go over and over again. In fact, these thoughts can hook us so much that it seems like it drives our behaviors towards things that may be less helpful in the long run. Now, the thing with thoughts are, sometimes the more you, if you try and force thoughts out, instead of becoming less common, they become more recurrent and become less, they become more difficult to manage. So today, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk less about fixing or changing your thoughts and the feelings, emotions, beliefs that kind of go with them, and instead talk about mindfulness, which is a way to approach them in a, in a new light.
mindfulness, it's more about being grounded and aware of yourself in the present so that your thoughts and feelings don't overwhelm you and don't control your actions and your behaviors. I'm going to cover a, a set of just a few different practices that you can do at home that can increase your mindfulness and make it easier for you to manage stress. The first of these is meditation. Now, before you just call this a bunch of hogwash and shut down your browser, give me a chance to give meditation, give me a chance to explain meditation. Meditation may not be what you're thinking right now. A lot of us think about meditation like this. And while that certainly could be a form of meditation, meditation can also look like this. Basically, to, to meditate, it mostly requires a quiet place where you can sit in a calm environment. Let me talk through a simple formula you can use to try meditating. It begins with finding a comfortable place where you can sit upright. Find a place and a time where you can close your eyes and breathe slowly and deeply in through your nose and out through your mouth. Many find it helpful to have a phrase or an image in their mind as they try to meditate, to focus on, or to repeat regularly. But the trick comes after you have get into this position. Most of us, once we start trying to meditate and start breathing and start thinking about our phrase or image, will find that your mind goes crazy with lots of different thoughts. You may be suddenly bombarded with images and thoughts about frustrating things you've experienced recently or stressful events coming up or a fight you recently had with your partner. And the trick is to accept that these come and let your attention and your mind calmly and slowly go back to the image or the phrase that you have. This will likely happen over and over again as you try meditating. And it might be tempting to get frustrated or berate yourself for not being able to keep focused. But the trick to meditating is to slowly and patiently develop an attitude of acceptance for the thoughts as they come. And then just let them slowly fade as you feel ready for them to go and return back to your phrase or your image. Many people find that uh, meditating for five to 10 minutes a day can greatly increase their mindfulness and help them manage the stress they experience better by changing the way they approach their thoughts and feelings. The second mindfulness technique I wanna talk about today is called box breathing. Box breathing has been used by Navy SEALs, athletes, among others, as a way to focus your attention and engage a natural soothing process in your body. It has a very simple formula that's easy to remember, and unlike meditation, doesn't require necessarily a calm environment to be able to use. Box breathing simply involves breathing in deeply for four seconds, holding your breath for four seconds, breathing out for four seconds, and then holding with your breath out for four seconds, and then repeating. I think, like many good things, this is much more effective to learn if you try doing it rather than just talk about it. So let's go ahead and do a practice right now. You may find it useful as you go through this breathing exercise to focus on breathing into your abdomen so that your belly expands and contracts with your breath. A lot of us, when we breathe, we breathe in and go up through the chest, but it may feel more relaxing to breathe and let your abdomen expand. All right, so give it a go. I'll call out the instructions and simply focus on your breath. Breathe in, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Release your breath, two, three, four. And hold, two, three, four. Let's try it one more time. Breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. And that's box breathing. Give this a try when you start noticing that you have anxiety building in you or the tense feelings in your chest or the sick feeling in your stomach that a lot of us experience as we feel worried and anxious about things coming. And you may find that this helps engage your body's natural soothing process 
and can also help the thoughts and feelings you experience be less threatening. The next mindfulness strategy I want to talk about is called progressive muscle relaxation. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's systematically tensing and rela relaxing specific muscles in your body in a sequence or progressive muscle relaxation. So progressive muscle relaxation can help you not only relax in the moment, but as you do it regularly, you may find that you notice when you're tense in areas of your body you didn't used to notice as regularly. Uh, this, unlike box breathing, may take a little bit more time to go through an entire progressive muscle relaxation where you tense muscles throughout your entire body, but I do want to make sure you get a taste of what it's like. So I'm going to take you through a short progressive relaxation series. Again, like others, you may find it helpful to close your eyes as you do this, although it isn't necessary. First, focus your attention on your neck and shoulders. Tense the muscles in your neck and shoulders by moving your shoulders up to your ears. Keep the muscles tensed for about five seconds. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Now release the tension and allow your shoulders and your neck to fully and completely relax. Now move your attention to your mouth and tense the muscles in your jaw. Open your mouth wide enough to stretch the muscles in your jaw and hold them there with that tension. Breathe in deeply through your nose and out through your mouth. Now release the tension in your jaw and let the area around your mouth fully and completely relax. Now move your attention to your eyes and tense the muscles there by closing your eyes tightly. Hold that tension for a moment. Breathe in deeply through your nose and out through your mouth. Release the tension around your eyes and let the area fully and completely relax. Finally, move your attention to your forehead. Raise your eyebrows as far as you can and hold the tension there for a moment. Breathe in deeply through your nose and out through your mouth. Release the tension in your forehead and let that area fully and completely relax. Now take a moment to notice how the muscles in your shoulders and face feel and compare that to other times, especially when you have a lot of stress in your life. Again, as you do this experiment regularly, you may find yourself noticing when you're tense in ways that you didn't notice previously and be able to engage that relaxing response more readily. Now the next technique I want to talk about is called the 5-4-3-2-1 technique. Now this is a technique that helps you be grounded in the moment when distressing thoughts and feelings come up. Again, a lot of us get kind of hooked or carried away by these emotions as they come. We find ourselves carried away by the thoughts and feelings and unable to act in the ways we normally would want to. The 5-4-3-2-1 techniques helps you be grounded in the present moment by focusing on what's happening around you right then. It simply involves noticing different things in your environment, such as things you can see, hear, smell, and even taste. I'll take you through one example of this exercise. Simply, to do this, you again simply need to just find a moment where you can focus on your environment around you. First, name five things that you can see in the room with you. You can name these either out loud if you're by yourself or just in your mind if you're with others. Next, name four things that you can feel. This can include things like the chair on my back, my feet on the floor, the feeling of my shirt, or the feeling of a breeze going across my hair. Next, name three things that you can hear right now. Now, name two things that you can smell. And finally, name one good thing about yourself. Many find that as they do this exercise, the distressing thoughts and feelings that seem to control them or inhabit them so strongly 
become more manageable and seem less threatening and less driving of our behaviors. Now, let me come back to just talking about what mindfulness is in a broad sense. Mindfulness is more than just a way to feel less tense. Even though a lot of the exercises we talked about involve a certain element of relaxation, this is more than just a way to engage a soothing process in your body. It's also a way to change how you relate to your thoughts and your feelings. In fact, sometimes instead of trying actively to change what you think about, simply accepting the thoughts and feelings as they are and recognizing that they don't need to be any more or any less threatening than they seem and that they don't need to be any more true than anything else can change the way that you relate to your thoughts. Sometimes simply being able to acknowledge that yes, I feel tense or yes, I feel anxious right now and that's okay can change the way that your thoughts influence your behavior. And finally, as we find ourselves able to change the way that we relate to our thoughts and feelings and have them drive our behavior less, you may find yourself more able to take action and do things that are more meaningful for you as you free up your mental and emotional energy. Now, you would, many of you would naturally ask, does mindfulness actually work? And of course, this is something that you'll know better once you try practicing yourself. However, there have been some studies that indicate, for example, that increasing mindfulness over time relates to better moods and less stress by increasing your control over behaviors and positive emotional states. Mindfulness can also help manage negative emotional states and result in better future management of negative emotions once a mindful mindset is learned and individuals may adopt a perspective change over time that assists in more healthy interpretations of stressful life events, which can lead to an overall reduction in stress. I'll say one more time that as good as this is for a lot of people, you won't know it yourself whether it will work until you give it a try. I want to encourage everybody listening to pick one of the things we've talked about and give it a shot. Try it regularly over a period of time and see if it can impact the level of stress you experience and change the way that you relate to your thoughts and your feelings. Additionally, there are a lot of apps that you can use to get started, especially with techniques like meditation that might be a little bit more difficult to learn. Let me just go give you quick examples of some of the apps that I've liked and used in the past. These include the Mindfulness app, Headspace, and Insight Timer, which can all give you great resources to try meditating or can help you have reminders to take a few moments and notice your present thoughts, feelings, and environment around you. As you do this, I hope and believe that you'll find a new way to relate to your thoughts and feelings so that they have less control over your behaviors and that you'll find yourself needing the less useful ways of coping and be able to find more positive actions and things that you can do that you value. Thank you again for your time today. It's been my pleasure to talk with you, and I hope that something I said today is you find helpful.